Hey guys, welcome back here to my channel and today to another little series where I'm going to be building a hyper coaster. The layout's already been done, that's for this month's challenge. Um, so I can't wait to see what you guys come up with as well. So basically this little series is going to be my build process of what I'm going to do with this uh, B&M hyper coaster. I based the layout basically on the smaller type of B&M coasters. I didn't want to do um, like a ginormous hyper like Shambhala or something or Nitro just because the map size would have been absolutely massive and I think with these diorama type challenges with theming up rides and doing um, a nice little diorama I think having a larger map is not the best thing to do just because it's too much space to fill, it's too much work and it doesn't become fun anymore and I think having like a nice small plot of land really helps um, with building and with putting your ideas into a smaller space um, so that's why I kind of made this map really skinny. It's 10 tiles wide and 100 tiles long. And my inspiration was kind of like um, the Goliath B&M hyper coaster, which isn't actually a hyper, it's a mega coaster. It's actually smaller than 200 feet, which can be found at La Ronde in Canada. And some of the other ones as well. I mean, Goliath, um, Goliath as well at Six Flags over Georgia was a bit of an inspiration for this one. That one is uh, 200 feet tall or taller, but yeah. Uh, so basically, my ideas for this map or this coaster so far, at this point in building, is absolutely zero. And um, I just kind of went and did a random colour scheme, which kind of ended up looking a little bit like the Bizarro colours uh, from the B&M Flawless Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. Um, that was totally like by mistake. But then I was actually thinking, oh, maybe I could do like a bizarro coaster or something, but I didn't do it. So um, this takes a complete 180. This whole design map, everything takes a complete 180. It turns out completely different to what I'm showing you now. But I just want to show you the kind of the basics and how the journey took me to where I've gotten to at the current state in the map. Um, so yeah, so I started with doing some things like custom supports. I just done the lift hill there and I'm going to set the land up today as well. Um, my thought was if I don't really know what theme to do at least do the basics and then I can come in later on and add the theme on top so that's what I'm doing I, I really wanted to do something realistic this month I mean I do that every month but I wanted to focus on the details this month of like a realistic roller coaster and a realistic kind of theme park setting having uh, you know like a locker room for the ride uh, a photo on ride photos kind of shop at the end of the exit somewhere um having like a really kind of cattle pen queue line in there with some canopies and things really like you know typical um theme park stuff um so that's kind of what i wanted to do i just wasn't sure on the theme just yet uh right now i'm actually experimenting with the mini monorail um just to try and do a return chain on the coaster i did that before somehow but it's not working out this time so instead i've taken a beam rotated it to 40 degrees using freedom 2k and i'm actually going to just run that down there um through the supports back to the beginning of the lift hill for a nice chain return um these are just kind of the standard b m kind of details that you would find i, I think some of the b m coasters now especially the inverts anyway but i don't know if some of the other ones the chain return actually goes back through the spine of the coaster maybe that is um what happens on the gigas because i think they're slightly different i'm not really sure to be honest but um the spine on the gigas are much thicker on the lift hill as it acts as also as a support um but yeah so i wanted to do a chain return there and now i'm just laying down some paths the queue line path will actually go completely in the other direction to what i've just done now but what i've done was just kind of my first initial thought and put things i like to put things just down on the map and then i can kind of take it from there uh just working out some of those custom supports how i'm going to do the bottoms of them etc um, nothing is quite finalized just yet at this stage um i'm going to change the colors of everything i'm going to add a theme on top and actually in this part of the recording that i was doing um i built a station and the station I don't end up using at all. I did kind of like the station. It was your typical kind of basic Six Flags style station, but I, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, but I did delete it, unfortunately. But I will show you at the end of this um, some screenshots of kind of the process and the, or the progress, I should say, of what I've done 
and you'll see there just kind of how that station looked. Nothing special, but it was kind of cool um, for like a basic non-themed station. Um, so along the front of the coaster, I'm going to do like a nice big open path area. Um, I'm doing my kind of wavy path technique thing that I like to do. So I'm actually using green path covers. I'm going to change the green of them slightly to match in with the grass. Um, but I'm doing green path covers there to kind of make a shape on top of the textured tile because you can't do shapes with the textured tile. So I'm doing that on top and then on top of the textured tile, that's hard to say, textured tile in the front, I'm actually going to do more paths but in a grey tone so and do another wavy pattern. So it's kind of like three different colours. Um, I think that will make it look a little bit interesting. It will make this area um, nice and open and it will give me some kind of points to do the queue line entrance. I also want to do like a little restaurant or a, like a, a food outlet kind of small stall somewhere as well which will match the theme of the coaster which you'll get into in a, another episode. If you are one of my Patreons and you're, or you want to join my Patreon, you'll actually see what I'm doing so far. I did put a little teaser on Discord, but my Discord members, not my Discord members, my Patreon members, sorry, have actually um, had a full little screenshot update the last few days on what I'm doing and how it's looking. And I'm really excited with the direction that it's going in, going in and I can't wait to do more and kind of play around a little bit more with the theme that I chose. Um, so yeah, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can head over there for just three euros a month, um, the price of a coffee somewhere maybe, and uh, just support me as a creator, etc. And I really do appreciate it. Um, and those guys that do support me over there do get early access to my videos, and also they also get the little behind the scenes previews of what I'm building and my ideas, etc. So thank you to you guys who actually are my Patreon members. I really do appreciate it. Like honestly. Um, and also actually while I'm talking don't forget to subscribe and also give me a thumbs up for this video um, Every little helps and um, I really love getting my channel out there and letting people see what I'm doing and being part of the theme park building game community So I added in a flat ride just there on the end colors are subject to change of course But I thought it was a really nice position to put like a frisbee type ride um, I kind I would have liked to have had like a more of like a a hus type frisbee but uh one of these samperla discovery things is fine they just go over the top and i'm not really keen on that uh the station i'm not going to show you the station build but the part of the build i will show you is me putting on the discs on the floor which kind of indicate where a guest would stand before boarding the coaster and also i'm doing some like handrails and stuff in the station i thought i'd show you those bits because those bits i actually copy and paste as a blueprint and use them in my second station that i build which i will show you at a later date um but before i kind of round up this video i mean it's not really that a lot that much to show you today just like i said the basic stuff and getting it all set up but i'm going to do the catwalks and the transfer track area. So I'm taking the I-beam from the Resort Tech mod, which works out absolutely perfect for this. And this is probably the only kind of bit that's not super realistic um, because my transfer track isn't super wide and it only kind of transfers onto one storage track. Whereas a real BM Hyper would have two or three kind of storage tracks. Although I did look on Google Earth or Google Maps uh, at some other hypers and I can't remember which one it is now but one of them does have like a really long but skinny transfer storage track um, and I guess that's all due to space and that park and how much space they have and how much storage space they can kind of put in so I guess it's always different depending on the park and the coaster so that's why I'm not too hung up about having such a small transfer area um, like, a, like every coaster every park is different somehow you know um, so uh, I like to do the catwalks on the transfer area just a little bit shorter than they should be just so you can kind of see where it would slide so that's why I've left a gap there and then the on top of the actual I-beam I've put like a little black pole just to kind of look like a little rail or somewhere where the coaster would actually slide across um, so yeah that's that I was actually a little bit worried this month because I started a new job uh, because while COVID's still kind of happening, I'm not really doing what I'm trained to do. And so I started a, a new job just to make some money. And it just happens to be as a ride operator in a theme park, which is actually really super exciting for me because I like to see all these little behind the scene details, etc., of like how a theme park works, etc. So I've actually really been enjoying it, but I've, I've, been, I've been doing quite a lot of hours and I've not had that much time to play. Um, 
and I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to actually participate this month with this map but actually I've been really inspired from working in the park um, not that our park has a hyper coaster but I've been really inspired from working in the park and also just from being like around theme park atmosphere every day and I've just opened the game a couple night a few nights this week and actually just put some work into this map and it's actually going somewhere now and I was really worried that I wasn't going to have the time or I was going to be too tired or have other things that were important that I needed to do that were kind of going to take over my time I would use to play the game but actually it's, so far it's been going okay I've been really motivated with this map so far so hopefully it stays that way and I can finish it and not have uh, too much of a panic to finish it in time before the deadline so before I wrap up this video, I am just putting in some fences around the queue line. As you can see that I've done some diagonal pathing using path covers. Um, I've done that a million times in other videos, so you know how I do that. And unfortunately, there's not a diagonal fence in that fence that I want to use. And I can't rotate that 45 degrees on Freedom 2K because it's one of these grid locked type fences. So I have to use a different fence for the diagonal pieces. But it's really important to do nice fences around like the path areas where guests maybe could come in contact with the coaster so you need to protect your guests so nice high high paths around those areas here's the cattle pen section that i was talking about that's going to be um, covered up with a design at some point and yeah it's basically like i said the basics done i've got the path layout done kind of where everything's going to go so all i need to do now is kind of fill in the gaps do some theming and tidy everything up do the custom supports for the entire ride which i'm actually going to do off camera because it's the most boring thing to watch ever and I just decided to fill in this part of the map with this really nice chip wood kind of texture which I think looks cool, um, kind of breaks up the green a little bit. But yeah, that is basically everything to show you this month. I am going to leave you some screenshots, like I said, uh, at the end of the video. Oh, before I go, I'm actually doing like a little bit of a monorail here because I think I've been thinking of a way to cover up the depot and I think I'm going to do like a maintenance area for a monorail, which I think would work out kind of cool and kind of realistic at that part of the park where no guests can actually go to. So I'm gonna think about that a little bit more and how I'm gonna do that. But I think that's what I'm gonna go for. I just need to find out a way to execute it. But anyway, like I said, this is the end of the video now. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, do give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all next time here for another episode on my channel. And now I'll just leave you with a couple of screenshots of what I've done. Bye.